Okay, we need to talk about what happens if you have a polyprotic acid, so something that has more than one proton, that also has a strong acid as part of that. Sulfuric acid is about the only example of that, really. But sulfuric acid is a strong acid for the first proton. There is no Ka value, this goes to completion. So whatever the concentration is, that's your concentration of H3O+. This HSO4- minus is a weak acid. So this one does have an equilibrium and does have a Ka value. You'll note that the Ka value for this is higher than any of the Ka values for H2SO4. So even the second proton of, even the second proton that's trying to come off from sulfuric acid is stronger than even the first proton coming off of phosphoric acid. So what does this mean? Well, unfortunately, this one always goes to completion, but this one may or may not, and it depends on concentration. So this is also in the notes, but we're gonna talk through it. So if your concentration is above 0.5 molar, which isn't uncommon, not a stupidly high concentration, essentially only the first reaction happens. So much of this is created that it, <laughs> basically it prevents the second reaction from occurring, okay? It, basically builds up and prevents it, okay? Or sorry, the, the amount of sulfuric acid, or the amount of H3PO4 builds up and prevents the second reaction from occurring, okay? So in other words, if your concentration is above 0.5, it's a strong acid and you just take the first equivalent. So you just take the negative log of the concentration and that's your pH. If your pH, or sorry, if your concentration is below 0 0.001, which is a pretty low concentration, it turns out that both reactions just go to completion and you can ignore Ka. So whatever the concentration is, you double that and take the negative log of it because that will, you'll get two equivalents of H3PO4 along the way. Not too bad. If you're between those two ranges, between 0 0.001 molar and 0.5 molar, what happens is the first reaction goes to completion. So whatever the concentration is, you get that much H3O plus. Then the second reaction, you start with that same concentration value and have to do the ice method and see how much H3O plus you get. Since you're getting H3O plus from two reactions, you're going to have to add them up and then take the negative log of it before you can do the pH. I'm going to show an example of this in the next video. Be patient.